on to this video and in this video I'm going to talk about my Hammer Horror Collection. Now I'm going to talk in this first episode about my Frankenstein and Dracula Hammer Horror Blu-rays and a couple of DVDs because I haven't got them on upgraded them to, to Blu-ray yet. I did have them all on DVD but as they came out on Blu-ray Blu -ray, they were dripped out I replaced them with that and there's a couple that I need to replace still. They are out there I think but I just haven't got around to it yet. But first, first I would like to do a quick unboxing that's just dropped through the post here. Now in my last video uh, I did an unboxing and also, I, mean, I was an unboxing, and this is the mail unboxing. And um, I had a great comment from my good friend Koroshi Ichi and he said that he loved my um, stories that I tell during my unboxing so I've got a really good one for you today. Now, this here just dropped through the post and as I open it I'll tell you the story. I'll keep it I'll keep it short because I don't want to keep it too long. Um, when I was very young in the 70s uh, the teacher said to us tomorrow I would like you to all to bring in a recorder to class and me and my friends sitting next to each other said oh brilliant I can't wait to bring the recorder in. Um, he said the teacher said if you've got any in the house bring them in if you haven't I will give you some. So I thought, no, me and him had some, so I went and said, we're going to get them in. So we've got to have a sax, we'll put the recorders into it, and the next day came, and whatever lesson it was, the teacher said to us, right now, would you like to take your recorders out? And also, he got out his recorder, as in one of them ones, like the penny recorders that you play in school and you never ever play again. But me and my friend had brought in our tape recorders, now just as we were pulling them out of our bags with a gloating look on our face to think we've probably got the best one in the, in the, um, in the class, we looked at each other, realised our faux pas and put them back in our haversacks and put them underneath the floor, underneath their tables uh, to avoid the embarrassment of pulling them out and going and be the only two in the class that have got tape recorders instead of flute recorders. So there's your story for today. Anyway. I'll get into this one. Now I ordered this, I think this is off eBay, and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. And also I knew, I know what the mistake I've made ordering it. I realised that never order, well, not that I was drunk, uh, never order anything when you're tired or drunk, because you might pick something that you regret in the morning when you, your vision clears. And it is, yes, I did make a mistake, sort of. It is the 4K of Us. Now I think this film is a great film and I do rate it higher than Get Out. Although I do like Get Out, but I wouldn't buy Get Out. Now can you see the thing I've made, this make I've made about this re release? It doesn't have a slipcase on and I've been watching this on eBay for quite a while to make sure I get the slipcase. And in, my, in, in the middle of the night when I was looking on um, eBay, I mistakenly, rather than just asking, has this got a slipcase on it, it really looked like on the picture that it did have a slipcase, but when I looked at it again in the morning just to double check that I'd won the bid, um, wow, it was, um, I thought to myself, this has not got a slip cover on it, so this is another um, movie, whoops, oh my goodness, landed face up, thank God, and it was the Blu-ray, which will never get watched, so that's good. Um, um, yep, looks some great, Nick. Um, it was cheap, but also I need to get a blue. The search for the slip, the search for the slip cover goes on for this release. Never mind, I'm happy to have it, but as you know, I love my slip covers. Okay, so let's get into this. So first, I want to start off with just a slight segue, which is in the shape of this book, which I've shown in my in the previous uh, videos. And it's horror movies by, it's released by Octopus. I don't know who actually wrote it. Um, I don't think there's any, there's any sort of details about the writer of this. But this is a must have for fans of Hammer Horror and just horror in general. It takes you up, I think from the 50s to round about um, 1974 type thing, which is good because it covers all the Hammer stuff like that. And it's got loads and loads of colour pictures in. There's one on eBay at the minute, and it's on for £15. And I urge anybody who likes 
who are fans of this sort of the early horror movies, you get lots and lots of uh, great pictures and also great interesting uh, stories about each film in the series for the uh, the Hammer, the Hammer uh, horror ones. You get stuff about Dracula, Frankenstein, you get all sorts of stuff. So it's highly recommended if you want to get it. And £15 is a great price to pay. Mine's a bit battered, but I have looked at this incessantly when I was a kid. Okay, enough of that. So let's start off with the Hammer Horror Frankenstein movies. Now the first one here was released by Lionsgate and is 1957's The Curse of Frankenstein. Now this introduces us to Dr. Frankenstein, played by Peter Cushion, and he is amazing. As you know, Peter Cushion is probably great in every single thing he's done. But this one here is one of his, his better roles for me. And um, he's quite a despicable person, actually. He doesn't really play by the rules of the previous Frankensteins, who are sort of somebody who was trying to do his best, and maybe failed um, astronomically. But this, this character, the Frankenstein, which I really like, I like about him, he's a bit despicable. He, he wants everything his own way, and he will stop at nothing to get what he wants. And that carries through this out through the series. And usually, the, and the series is more about the Peter Cushion Frankenstein than more about the monster. And usually, well, in every film, there is a different monster. That's not any spoilers, but um, this this one here introduces Christopher Lee as the monster, which was a great um, character to have in, but the size of him, the gangliness of him. I think he played a, a great Frankenstein's monster. And this is the three disc edition. It's got two DVDs and one Blu-ray. The picture quality for me could have been better, if I'm honest. Um, it looks a bit washed out. The, the print is sharp, it's quite clean. But it, for me, the, the great thing about Hammer Horror is the, the visual colours. It was They were starting to make co uh, colour films when colour just sort of became the mainstream in the 50s. And they lavishly made um, their colours a part of their, their set. Um, they made made sure there was a colourful set and, and to, to take full advantage of the, the colour medium. But this one here, the print seems pretty washed out and I would imagine there would be, if somebody could get a hold of it and remaster it, I think they could do a much better job in it. But saying that, it's still good and it's a great film as well. One of my favourite uh, Frankenstein ones. The next one is 1958's The Revenge of Frankenstein. Now this is on a double bill with The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb and this is from Mills, Mills Creek. Mill Creek Entertainment. Now the quality on it is a little bit, you know, it's not as good as most of the horror films that I've got, the Hammer horror films, but it's all right. But I believe that the Indicator one from the, in the UK, I think Indicator or Powerhouse did it, or maybe Indicator is Powerhouse. They have um, done a really good version of this one, but this one is okay and it's quite cheap online if you can get it. This one was gifted to me by my good friend, Hogos73. Now next came 1964's, there was a bit of a gap, and, it became, and the next one out was the, the, evil, the Evil of Frankenstein, 1964. Now this one here is from Final Cut Entertainment, and it's, it's okay, don't get us wrong, Final Cut did sort of delve into the Hammer Horror films, they did do a quite a good job of it, but I always preferred the stuff that Studio Canal put out, I think they put out the best versions of the films, for me personally. Now this one here is a is a double pay, double play, which is a DVD and a Blu-ray. The film itself is a good film. The monster is a bit of a strange monster. It looks a little bit like the original Frankenstein, although they could not get the rights to make the Frankenstein's monster like the Boris Karloff monster because Universal Pictures would not let them use that uh, look, you know, so they had to make their own versions of monsters up. And usually that was okay because the monster was a different monster than everyone and had a different take on the monster and what the monster was all about. But this one was a quite a strange looking monster. But quite a good print on what I remember. Now the next one here is, we'll go to 1967, and this is my favorite out of the Hammer Horror Frankenstein films, even though the all are good. I'm not saying any of them are terrible, but this one for me is the one that really stands out. And it is Frankenstein Created Woman. Now this one here is released by, I'm not too sure who released this one actually. And it's got a lovely slipcover. And also inside 
it has exclusive collectible cards now I really don't think I've opened this no it's still sealed um, I don't know if you can see that but I'm not going to open it I'm going to keep it like that but I do like the fact that it's in there as well I don't even know what they look like um, and this was released by Millennium Entertainment not really heard of them I would imagine it's uh, the US and this film is my favourite because for some reason it's, I wouldn't say it was very graphic I wouldn't say there was anything in it that was like particularly frightening but for some reason because I believe that the Dr Frankenstein the the sort of take on this particular movie is the fact that he takes the soul of somebody the soul out of his body and transfers his soul to this woman who I believe might have been his his fiance and she killed herself she drowned herself because her husband got beheaded he was wrongly accused of something he didn't do and so he gets he gets his soul you know of course you do I'll just take his soul out and I'll just chuck it in his uh, his lass but anyway what happens with that is that this person here becomes sort of his soul goes into her body and she's try, she uses her uh, womanly charms to exact her revenge on the group that set him up to the went to the guillotine but some of the things that gets me is it, it is got a quite a good um uh, shock factor in certain scenes but the fact is that sometimes when this this uh, this lady is, is overtaken by the spirit of her her dead fiance she talks with the, the man's voice now when i was very young and i watched this this did really frighten us i don't know why it frightened us but it did frighten us and this one here when i watched it again recently because me and my wife went through the whole lot and watched the whole lot uh, i did think that this was my favorite and it was it was uh, suspicions were confirmed when i watched it again and i thought this is brilliant so i highly highly recommended this one recommend this one if you can track it down get it because for some reason it's got that kind of um the fact that somebody gets wronged and then somebody gets a little bit like a revenge movie with a sort of strange twist on the, the woman side of things and as a side note the lady in it suzanne denberg i believe she's she's a like a supermodel but i think that after this film she i don't know if she made any more films but i know she suffered from severe mental health problems after this film i don't think it was because of this film but I know that she didn't really have a good life after that mentally, which is a bit of a shame because she seems she did she fits in this film really good, and she is a um, is a real good actress in this movie. So, yeah, it's my favourite. Next is a DVD, and it is Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed, which was released in 1969. Now this film here is quite a funny one because when I used to watch this on TV, there's a scene in it where the monster there played by freddie francis who is also in my, one of my favorite films the elephant man he plays bites who is the the sort of bloke who owns the elephant man john merrick joseph merrick and this one here i'm pretty sure it's on blu-ray somewhere but i just have not got around to it now when i watch this on tv for some reason there's a scene where they put this fella i think they put him in the garden for some reason i don't know they bury him in the garden for whatever and i think they go through a pipe and this water just spurts out of this ground for no apparent reason but i don't know why but it really really frightened us i must have been watching them far too young i don't know why that would frighten anybody but it did and i always stuck in my mind and i remember i was saying to my wife when we watched it i said that scene there was one of the most frightening scenes i've ever seen and she said what for and i said well i don't know but that water scene just frightened the death out of us i don't know why but this film here is uh, another one where there's a strange sort of um, twist in these movies halfway along that uh, Frankenstein gets kind of killed-ish and his brain gets trans gets taken into another body and the other body gets plastic surgery to look like Dr. Frankenstein. So he kind of comes back to life even though he's being killed and that's quite a weird twist in the, in the middle of this series but keep an eye out for that it's not a spiral alert because and then it get kind of it gets kind of forgotten about in, in later ones so anyway that's 1969's frankenstein must be destroyed the next one here was and i don't know particularly why this happened but i know that they made another 
sort of um, it's like an offshoot of the Frankenstein films and they made this one here called The Horror of Frankenstein. Now this one has come out by Studio Canal on Blu-ray and I am going to get it. I was going to get it the other day but the slip cover, slip cover on um, the, the movie in HMV looked as if it had been taken off about 3,000 times and kicked around the floor then put back on. It was very ruggy so I wasn't going to go there but I will get that and I do want it with a slip cover because I've got most of these. The When I can't get one with a slip cover with uh, from uh, with a hammer, I do try and get the, the hammer ones. Um, I haven't got any that really do, haven't got the slip covers on uh, at this point. The Fulham itself is is one that I haven't and I haven't when we watched all of the the, the stuff with me and my wife, we didn't go and visit this one. I will visit it, but I just didn't get around to it. I do believe it's a bit more like a comedy, and that's Dave Prowse there, who is Darth Vader, who is the Frankenstein's monster in this one. Um, I just can't remember too much about it, but I do know it's a bit tongue-in-cheek. Um, but it could be one of the, the lesser uh, Hammer horror films, Hammer Frankenstein films. Now the next one here is the last of the, uh, the Frankenstein films that starred uh, Peter Cushion in the Hammer horror films. It is Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Now I really like this film, although the monster is one of the weirdest things you've ever seen in your life. It looks like a sort of reject from a... a a Doctor Who episode and I don't know if you remember the Doctor Who episode which is a great um, thing with Tom Baker, the, um, the brain of Morbius it just remembers, it just reminds us of the monster in that and the, the monster in the brain of Morbius used to really frighten us uh, I love that uh, so this has got a Blu-ray and it's also got two DVDs as well it's what they call the triple play which is not really, not really a triple play if you know what I mean for me now this is uh, this is the last one to feature um, the Peter Cushion, and I do know that did it did it end did it not end I don't know you'll have to find out but it's a great little series this and one that I highly recommend you get if you like if a fan of uh, Hammer Horror do track down the Frankenstein ones. Now saying that here is the um, the Dracula ones I've got. Now this is the full set of the Dracula ones that were released by Hammer Horror. Before I do that, I just want to show you something. This is a pair of drumsticks. You might say why, and I'll show you why. Because, I don't know if you can see this, but that is, they are personalised. They were bought by my son for Christmas last year. And I must admit, I was quite surprised when I saw it, when he, he gave us something, he said, here, as he does, there you are. And I says, right, uh, What's this like? So I got someone. I said, "Wow, drumsticks!" And I said, uh, "Thanks." I didn't understand why. I mean, I'm always using drumsticks, but I don't know why. So he said, um, "Well, have a look at them." And I went, "Bye." And so anyway, when I saw that the personalized touch, I thought, "Wow, that's great." Now the the funny thing is about them. I like them that much that I don't really use them. I've never used them yet. So will I ever use them? I don't know. But I've got a plan to use them, but I don't like to think of as uh, damaging them because sometimes when you use a drumstick, you can really thrash the hell out of it. So anyway, I just saw them and I just wanted to show them to you. So really, that's why I wanted to show them so I could do that. Okay. Right. So here we go with the Dracula ones. First of all is the classic Dracula, or as it's known in the States, the horror of Dracula. Now this here is another um, Lionsgate release. Now this one as well. I've got to say it's great don't get us wrong it's really sharp but it does have that sort of little bit of a washed out look it doesn't have the colors that you would imagine that would pop in the other the do in the other air uh, the hammer horror ones so I was a little bit not disappointed but I was a bit hmm I wish uh, I wish they'd done a bit more of the color timing on that one and I think that uh, it could do with a good re remaster although it is fully uncut it does have a few scenes in that were taken out it's not much but it's in the picture quality it does drop but the fact that they're in there is great to get the full version of Dracula. A little bit like the full version of Psycho's coming out now, which was thought to be lost or not even knew it was out there. I think they found the, um, the elements for this in somewhere in Japan, I believe, underneath the floorboard. They always find elements underneath floorboards, don't they? Okay, so that's 1958's Dracula. Now next, uh, Christopher Lee didn't return to the series for quite some time. And they must have had a big hit with that. They must have said to Christopher Lee, would you like to come back as Fra Dracula? And he said no. So they made another one called The Brides of Dracula. Now this is a final cut uh, release and the picture quality on this is good and the, 
the, the colors on here are really vibrant and that's what you expect from a hammer a hammer film now this is a double play dvd and um, blu-ray so it's really good quality although the sort of i do like the story i do think it's got some good uh, elements to it and of course you've got they managed to get christopher lee back sorry peter cushion back as uh, von van helsing uh, which i think is great but the whole thing is a little bit tainted by the fact of dracula is not really dracula is like a different sort of account you know but you know it is what it is and i think they've just done that to try and maybe um write off the uh, the, the power of frank and of dracula but maybe the, the mr it's all right as a film it's it's good it's good but it could have been a standalone film for another type of thing it's just ties in because van helsing is in both films now next uh, christopher lee was um was he, he was enticed back to the role i don't know why but when he read the the script for this movie he immediately said i am not saying any of those words because they are ridiculous so he refused to talk so the the funny thing about this movie and some of the other movies is the dracula does not speak so it is 1966's the prince of darkness now this is one of the first ones that i bought on blu-ray um, and I think I would have bought it around about 2010, 2011, when Studio Canal started to put these out. Now they did an amazing job with this. This looks absolutely unbelievable. But unfortunately, this is the one, this is one of the early ones, and it does the, the sinking goes out of sync for about two minutes. It doesn't really get on my nerves, but in fact it's it does that. I always wanted to swap it, but I don't want to swap it and get one that doesn't play properly but i will do one day i suppose but at this moment i can put up with that it's not really that bad and it's only lasts for about i think say 10 minutes if that um so yes so that's so he comes back but he doesn't speak so don't be expecting any eloquence like he does in, in dracula he just plays it mute or just points and looks and you know bleeds from the eyes all that type of thing but still it's a great film i really like that and it's got a a, a super um, vibrant picture as well really uh, this is where the picture quality is, is starting to get stunning on the Dracula ones because they're very um, they're very lush you know the picture so the next one that came out now these all now with with Christopher Lee's in the ties back to the role now he's staying with the role for for the moment and um, although I think he was trying to get out of it but he just had to fulfill maybe a contract that he had now this next one is 1968 um, Dracula has risen from the grave. Now this one here is released by, it's a Warner Brothers title. It's an American release. It's on the eco case as well. And to be honest, before I watched this recently, I didn't really remember too much about it and I didn't think it was maybe something that um, was gonna interest as, as much as the other ones, my favorite ones. But when I watched it, I thought it was a really, really good film. I did really enjoy it. Uh, there's elements in this film the storyline that i really find uh, quite engrossing uh, i don't want to give too much away about it i mean obviously you know that dracula would always be come back from the grave and he usually gets killed at the end every single one in certain different ways i love the ways that he he gets killed and they were trying to think of other odd ways that he could get killed and if you got you know through the stake in the heart you would be something else would happen in the next one they wouldn't just give him a stake in the heart for every single movie but they did used to mix it up a bit. So this one here, I, I do highly recommend it. And it's uh, it's one of my favorites actually. And it's uh, this one here is a really good picture quality as well. Very nice. Now the next one is 1968's Taste the Blood of Dracula. This again is a, a US release. I think it's been released in the UK, but I'm not too sure about that. And it might be re-released from this release as well. And this is another Warner Brothers release. Now it will be, yes, it's on it. Um, eco disc eco box should I say but this is my favorite of all the the Hammer Dracula films and the reason why that is because it's got an element of um, revenge in it as well as there's, there's a group that go out and they are a kind of a group that want to ha live life to the excess you know how you can get um, some people like thrill seekers but this is set in the you know the 1800s so this fella comes across and it's Ralph Bates actually and he takes them and he says I can show you things you've never seen and he takes he takes them into this den of iniquity and vice and they want something else and they say well it's good but it's not enough they, they've got this and the characters are meant to be people who are like really 
um, pillars of society, but they've got this dark side of them. When they get together in a group, they want to look into the, the dark side of life. So this fella says, well, I can get you the, um, when Dracula was killed in the previous one, he says, I can get you his cape, I can get you the blood, I can get you all this. So they inadvertently resurrected uh, Dracula, who came back to exa exact his rage on them as well. So it's a great film, and I do highly recommend it. If you can get your hands on it, do look out for it, because it's, and it's in really good quality as well. And for me, you can't go past it. I do love this film. The next, funny enough, the next one was released in 1970 as well. And it is The Scars of Dracula. Now this is released by Studio Canal. And it's a lovely print, I've got to admit. It's one of the best ones I've ever seen uh, with the, Frank the Dracula ones. Especially Studio Canal, as you know, are a, on a, um, are a company that you can trust to put out something really, really nice. Now this one here, yes, it is nice. And it's got, they're all, these have all got extras on, so most of them have anyway. And I do highly recommend them all. But this, if I'm honest, it's probably the least, the, the, the least of the movies. And I think for two reasons. The two main characters here, Dennis Waterman, who was in Minder, you know, you, you must remember Dennis Waterman. I think he's in someone else as well at this moment. He's really miscast in this movie. And also Jenny Agatha as well. She's kind of really miss, uh, um, what did I, what's the word? Uh, miscast, wow. That one went up the, uh, the top. So yeah, so miscast and also it, it does, the film does suffer for it. It's got some other things, any good things in it. The fact is there's a great scene where Dracula, he can, and it doesn't mention this in any of the films, but it is a thing that Dracula can do. He can scale walls and he scales walls of castles to get into this room that has no doors, only a window. That's a really good, um, a good introduction to this, this other side of Dracula, but and Dracula does talk quite a lot in this film, as he hasn't been talking for much in the other two, the other three. But um, yes, it's not one of the good ones. It's it's quite weak in the uh, the series. Probably the weakest one actually. Now this next one, we, weirdly enough, Dracula AD seventy two. I've got my list here, which tells us what years they're from, because I'm a little bit. Sometimes I might get them just a couple of years out, and I can see if you see this was released in nineteen seventy two. Now this has just been released recently, probably just the end of last year, on the HMV Premium Collection. And this is a, I think it's a great movie. And if you've seen this movie, you will understand what that means. And you've got, uh, it comes with some R cards as well, which I haven't opened yet. Well, I'm saying yet, I, I won't open them. And it also has a poster as well, which I can't get out. But you've got, you've got a poster there as well. And the picture quality, although I haven't watched these yet in this, no, I think, yes, we watched it on the DVD before when we watched the series um, of this, these movies. Um, so I haven't watched this particular one, but I have scanned through it and it does, it is a really good uh, looking picture quality on it. Um, it's got some, it's only got theatrical trailer, unfortunately, a special features. I think they could have got more special features on there. But presentation wise, it's just an amazing, amazing uh, version as these premium collection ones are i like premium collection when i like the title but i wouldn't get, go for them all because there's a lot in there that i just personally just don't really like so the next one is is from the premium collection as well and it is 1973's the satanic rites of dracula now this again only has a theatrical trailer has a love has a lovely card box um, sometimes when you go to CEX and you just see them stand on the shelf like that and you realise that the box is gone yeah, I wouldn't go for it at all when it's like that it's another one that's got uh, your R cards in there and it will have a poster as well yes it's got a poster in there and the R cards and you've got um, your Blu-ray there also you've got a, a good uh, vampire staking there and this one you could see when you watch it, most of them aren't really direct sequels to each other, although they are, but these two here really follow on. They've got most of the same cast in it, and it kind of, it does really, these are sort of like made back to back, I would imagine, and they do, they're more like a companion piece to each other. Really good titles as well. And this one has been so hard to find on Blu-ray, 
uh, of getting a release, a good release on anything because it's been in the public domain and it's been released on every single bit of trash you can imagine. But this one here is a, is a beautiful picture as well. So them two highly recommended. Although I can't remember the Satanic Race of Dracula at all because we haven't watched it again. So the last one in the series from the Hammer Horror Dracula uh, collection is unfortunately I haven't got the Blu-ray yet but I have got it on DVD. It's The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Now unfortunately Christopher Lee by this point had ditched uh, Hammer Horror and he went off and made, probably in retaliation, he went across to uh, Italy and um, or Portugal or Spain and got in uh, cahoots with Jess Franco, who he would probably come into blows with later on, weirdly enough, as I don't know if anybody knows this, uh, this tasty morsel, that Jess Franco, the, the very low budget horror film who made mountains of uh, horror movies probably the most ever horror movies by one single person i think he's made 200 200 plus uh, horror movies he was model the the yoda is modeled on jess jess franco believe it or not and when you look at jess franco and you see him you can understand why they've got that now fast forward years and years later christopher lee was sparring in one of the uh, star wars films with yoda than having a battle with him so in a way that was a kind of a strange turn of events so he was off making his version of Dracula with Jess Franco which I've seen and it's not it's not really good it's all right <coughs> excuse me but this film here is got a different Dracula <coughs> excuse me and it's it's not he's not great in it but Christopher Lee's uh, sorry Peter Cushing's in it and he sort of steals the show and he is Van Helsing again and he goes off into this sort of it's basically if you can imagine and the dragon had just come out and it was a big massive hit so kung fu martial arts was at the forefront of most people's uh, mindset at the time so they went and they took that ep that that theory that they put it in a sort it's like a kung fu zombie film and for me it's quite a good film actually uh, the whole bits with Dracula you can sort of forget about them but um, and you can see this for free on um, on YouTube as well. But I do want to get the Blu-ray of it because I want to complete this whole collection in Blu-ray, and it's the only one that me and my wife haven't watched yet together. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.